there. I'm going to show you a little bit more about Monarch Reader. I was just playing around with it. Um, so I'm going to give you some tips. I'm going to try to make this as short as possible, but likely this will be very long. Um, so you can access the website, literally just click create a login. You can create a free login. I already did. Um, so it is free right now, which is great. And so I was kind of disappointed at first at first because I thought this was only for books that you can create. And so I did, I went and made a book um, just so you could see what that looks like. But I found if you click on Monarch Reader in the top right corner, it takes you to basically what Tar Heel Reader was. Um, so you can read a book or find books. So like I had just looked up like presidents to see if something come up there. Um, and so there's a couple books there that you can read about. So if you wanted to read more about like Donald Trump, you can look at this book and say, um, let's read this. Great. Um, this is all in current. Obviously you can go through and read it. You can also click this speaker button at the top and the president's job is to give speeches and it'll read it to you. So that's nice. You cannot currently change the voice, which I will give them feedback on to make sure that they can get that. You can save this book. That's what it is. Save it for another time. Or you can also download it as a PowerPoint or as just like a P PDF. That's basically what an EPUB is. Um, so if you want to read it offline, so that'll be cool if you want to do it in PowerPoint and you can draw things and add to it. Um, other setting things, it will highlight the background if you want it more color contrast type things. Um, if you want the page layout to look a little different, you can change that. So that is also interesting. Button sizes can be larger or smaller. Again, if a student is accessing it themselves, it's just more for accessibility. Uh, I'm going to go back to default for now. Um, actually, we're going to go normal. Okay. Um, so there's that. So if I go back to this, um, in the top right corner, I can go to my books and I can start new. So I just made a book about butterflies a second ago. So let's make a book about bees. Um, so I'm going to search some images. This is very student friendly. So I would think this could be more about like students doing their own little project, coming up with their own vocabulary, um, so maybe some sentence starters to help get them going. Um, but I'm going to find some pictures of bees that I really like. And I like this one. I'm going to add that to book. I'm going to add that to my book. So I'm going through and just clicking add to book. I can go to the next page. Oh, I like how this one is on a purple flower. I'm going to add that to the book. So I can add as many pictures as I want. And then this book preview, you're just going to go in and click. Um, I like bees. Um, next picture, bees get honey from flowers, right? I'm making sentences. Your students might be, um, coming up with this own vocabulary, or you might be supporting them using their devices. Um, bees are black. Right, uh, bees are yellow. Um, so there's my book. So I can go in and say my book title is Bees. Book description, you don't have to do anything under English. I always put whatever it is um, because they are going to read it as a website and decide like if it's something that the community should read or just you, and that's totally fine. Um, and I'm going to write animals, bees. Those are going to be my two taglines for that. So that students might need some help with that. Um, so this is my book. Um, I can save as draft. Oh, I need five pages. Hold on. Let me find another one. I didn't know you need five pages. Good to know. Uh, add to books. Do you like bees? Um, great. So now I know books need to be five pages. That's, that's interesting. And then I can publish it right there. I can delete it. Um, so publish and I agree basically again, that they are going to read through it. Um, it doesn't have any discriminatory things. Okay. Um, so then I'm going to go to my published and I'm going to show you my butterfly book that I made. Um, Butterflies. So again, I put on the voice, but I can turn that off. I can rate it or you can, students can rate it. Um, so you can go ahead and read it. You can practice reading with your student, um, having them read it themselves. They can type it out. Um, they can have it read to them. I like butterflies. Great. All those things. Um, so again, just going through the book, coming up with ideas for sentence starters. Um, they can talk about what the picture is actually doing if they pull the picture that's like doing something. Um, so possibilities are seriously endless if you want students to be making their own books. Um, 
on Tar Heel Reader, there used to be a feature where you could add your own pictures. Um, say you wanted to make a book about students' families or something like that. Um, I have not seen that feature yet, but you can import drafts. So I'm assuming that's probably something like a PDF um, or a PowerPoint that you can um, add. So you can start in PowerPoint and add potentially pictures if that's something you want to do. So hopefully that was helpful to see. Um, obviously, if I start having some saved ones, it'll stay there. But I can look around and see like what else is out there, what else is going on. So it is a bunch of different books, depending on what you're looking for, um, for your theme or topic. Um, just for fun, let me see what science looks like. But you kind of get the idea. Insects for science. Um, so I might want to add that to my bookshelf so that I can view that. So yeah, hopefully that was helpful to see. Um, this is really a cool feature to add to any literacy or a wrap up of like a project that you're doing with your class um, to kind of teach others and do a presentation potentially on it. So hopefully it was helpful to see.